Hello. I keep getting asked this question. Kevin, how is it that you lost your faith? Well, what is faith? Faith, as the Bible says, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what it boils down to is that faith is believing in something that you cannot see. So how did I lose my ability to believe in something that I could not see? How did I lose my ability to believe in something that I had no evidence of? I found evidence proving it otherwise. You know, call me crazy, but I thought that if this was the inerrant word of God, infallible word of God, that it should line up with history. But it does not. So am I to keep believing in this narrative when there is absolutely no evidence to support it? I just could not do that. But may I ask you a question? How was it that you acquired your beliefs, your faith? How did you come across your faith? Was it through careful examination? Was it through studying and research, different books, and you found what you believe now to be true, true? Was it because some entity or the Holy Spirit told you that this was true? Or was it simply because you were told that you should believe in this, that you should be subscribed to your belief system? It's funny, but when we teach these beliefs to our children, we teach them to our children wholeheartedly as if we've done this extensive research. We tell them what we believe is in fact true without ever telling them that you could possibly be wrong. When the truth is there are 4,200 religions, how can you be so sure of what you believe that you would then turn and reteach that belief to your child? Well, you say, well, I know it to be true because I've had experiences. I was once sick, I was healed. And I know that for sake of naming a God, Jesus healed me. Okay, because you were once sick and became healed, does that mean the narrative is now supported? Okay, the narrative, because you were sick and now you're healed, that means that Jesus was born of a virgin, died and rose again. During his life, this would mean that Jesus rose a man from the dead named Lazarus because you were touched, because you were sick and now you're healed. Because you were sick and now you're healed, that must mean that God created Adam and from his rib created Eve and placed a garden out of all the places to place one in, placed it in the garden that the very people he didn't want eaten of that tree would be living. And we are all in sin today because of Adam and Eve's disobedience of eating fruit. Well, that sin, well, eating fruit is not considered sin today, is it? So why was it sin then? What is sin? Sin is doing something that God told you not to do or disobeying God. So let's talk about this. The narrative has to be true because without this narrative, you're not a sinner, correct? And you need this narrative to be true because you need to be saved. Because if you're a sinner, you're going to hell unless this narrative is true. So if I take away your narrative, if you lose the faith in this narrative, you're now what? Unsaved? What if I were to tell you that you're not unsaved? You were never unsaved. You are a sinner because this literature tells you that you are a sinner. Would you have known you were a sinner had not you heard this literature? 
would you be afraid of going to hell had not you been told about this hell? Lastly, would you believe in Jesus had you not been told about Jesus?